Assalamu alaikum everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about Clonarchus. It is a continuation of the parasitology series and it is the second video on the traumatodes. Before getting into the video, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Let's get into it. Its full name is Clonarchus sinensis. It is a traumatode. I have a detailed video on traumatodes. Find its link in the description or in the top right corner. It is also called as liver fluke. Why? Because it lives in biliary ducts. And biliary ducts are the are those ducts that drain bile from the gallbladder. That is situated just under the liver. It is responsible for causing clonorchiasis that is also called as Asian liver fluke infection lecture outline. I have introduced you guys to the clonarchus. Now we'll talk about its morphology, habitat in transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and then the prevention. Let's start with morphology. Stages in the life cycle of Clonorchis. There are three stages that exist in the life cycle of every uh, traumatode. First one is egg, second one is larva, and third one is adult For fluke. Clonorchis, the larva exists in five stages. First one is myrosidium, then the sporocyst, then the radia, then the cercaria, and then the metacercaria. Morphology. Let's start with the egg first. It is oval shaped with a convex operculum at its anterior and we will uh, visualize its picture a bit later. It is small. Its size is 27 to 35 micrometers by 11 to 20 micrometers. The posterior end is abopercular end and it has a small knob or hook-like protrusion. The color of the egg is due to the shell that is thick yellow brown. Here you can see in the picture this is its anterior end that is its posterior. And this is its thick that shell. That is giving yellow to brown color. Lava. The first stage is myrosidium. That is slightly oval. It is ciliated and has two simple eye spots and lateral papilla protruding outwards and serve as sensory organs. Next is sporosis. It resembles a hollow and simple sac. Oftentimes the developing radia are visible. Next stage is radia. That resembles a sac. It has a pharynx but no esophagus or intestine. The developing cercaria are visible in its body. Time to discuss cercaria. It resembles small adder with a tail. It is brownish in color. It loses its tail upon penetration in the second intermediate host. It is not responsible for causing infection in humans, but it causes infection in the second intermediate host. We will talk about the hosts a bit later in this lecture. Keep watching. The tail of cercaria has dorsal and ventral fins on it to aid in locomotion because it is penetrating into the second intermediate host so it needs some sort of a movement cercaria there. Cercaria has four wings, two eye spots, penetration glands, stylet at its interior and cuticle with small spines. Next up is metacercaria. It is round and is encysted. It has thick wall and it has lost its larval organs because it is converting into adult. Mature fluke and its suckers are visible in its body. Adult fluke. It is narrow and is flattened dorsal ventrally. It is tapered at its anterior end and is rounded at the posterior end. It is 15 to 40 millimeters in length and 12 millimeters in width. It is pale brown or grayish brown in Adult color. Adult fluke has four wings. Adult fluke has suckers called acetabulum. It has no blood circulatory system. It has no body cavity. It has a genital pore that is responsible for releasing the fertilized eggs. It has branched testes. It has lobed the ovary. Long part of the fluke's body is covered with the reproductive organs. It has a pharynx and a esophagus. This is how the body of adult fluke looks like. 
this black part in the center is the all of the reproductive system, the male and the female, because this organism is hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite means that both the genders, the male and the female, exist in one body. Habitate. Definitive hosts are the human beings. I have a detailed video on the parasitology where I have talked in detail about what are different types of habitat. This link is in the description or in the top right corner, so don't forget to check that out. The intermediate hosts are freshwater snails and fish. Transmission. Transmissions occur via fecal oral route and by eating raw or undercooked fish. Life cycle of Clonarchus has three stages. First one is human cycle, then the snail cycle, and at the last we have the fish Let's cycle. Let's start with human cycle. Humans are infected by eating raw or undercooked fish containing the encysted larva, Metacercaria. After existation in the duodenum, immature flukes enter the biliary ducts and differentiate into adults. The hermaphroditic adults produce eggs which are excreted in feces. Upon reaching the fresh water, eggs are ingested by snails and then the snail cycle starts. The eggs hatch within the gut and differentiate first into larvae, the redii, and then into many free-swimming circaria. Circaria insist under the scales of certain freshwater fish. This is the fish cycle because circaria insist under the scale of certain freshwater fish which are then eaten by human beings which leads to the infection in human beings. Dramatic representation of life cycle of Clonarchus. It starts here. The embryonated eggs released by the human beings in their feces. Then these eggs are ingested by the freshwater snails and in their gut they differentiate into larvae. Larvae has the following four stages. As you can see there, the first one is myrosidia, then comes the sporocyst, then redia, and then circaria. These free swimming circaria insist in the skin or flesh of freshwater fish and then are differentiated into metacircaria. Metacircaria in flesh or skin of freshwater fish are ingested by human hosts. As we all know by now that humans are the definitive hosts, then after getting into humans, these insist in the duodenum and then these make their way, the adult flukes make their way to the biliary ducts, that's why they are called liver flu pathogenesis. In some infections, the inflammatory response can cause hypoplasia and fibrosis of biliary tract, but often there are no lesions. Epidemiology. Clonorchiasis is endemic in China, Japan, Korea, and Indochina, where it affects about 20 million people. Clinical findings. Most infections are asymptomatic. In patients with a heavy wound burden, upper abdominal pain means the pain in right upper quadrant where the liver lies, the pain occurs. Anorexia is seen. Hepatomegaly and eosinophilia can occur. Lab diagnosis. Sample. We will collect samples of sputum, urine and feces. Diagnosis is made by finding the typical small brown opoculated eggs in the feces under microscope and the ova and parasite, the ONP stool examinations are also important. Serologic tests are not used. Certain imaging techniques like ultrasound, CT scan, MRI are also useful. Treatment Prazicontol is an effective drug for treating the clonorchiasis. Prevention. Prevention centers on adequate cooking of fish and proper disposal of human waste. Let's review everything real quick. The organism is clonorchis. Its mode of transmission is via fecal oral route and by eating raw or undercooked fish. Its intermediate hosts are freshwater snail and fish. And its definitive hosts are human beings. The main sites affected in human body are liver, especially the biliary ducts. Diagnosis is based by finding opoculated eggs under the microscope, and the treatment of choice for this disease is prazicontal. It has no insect vector, 
and the stage that infects human is the larvae in undercoat and the stage in humans that is most associated with the disease is the adult flukes that live in biliary ducts and the important stage outside humans are eggs that are ingested by the snails and the cercaria that infects the fish and when this infected fish is eaten by human beings humans get infected and that's it for today's video on clonarchus i hope you guys enjoyed it you've learned something next video is on another trauma to connect with me on all of my socials i've got my instagram where i upload amazing infographics for example take this one where i have uploaded the resources that you guys can use for pathology I've got my Twitter and I really Until upload time. time. Assalamu alaikum.